Most tabletop role-playing game systems have the concept of rolling dice as a way to determine whether a player character in the game succeeds or fails when attempting a non-trivial task. Of course, you and I know a die roll doesn't itself have any meaning. A 20 on a 20-sided die is just a number, no better or worse than a 1 or a 6 or a 6 on a 6-sided die. It's up to the game to define what those numbers mean in terms of success or failure by forcing the game master to set a target number or a DC or difficulty class in D&D. To be perfectly honest, I don't think asking a game master to come up with the definitions of success and failure is great game design. I, I know it's a time-honored tradition, but that doesn't mean it's the best way to do something. I in this video, I'm going to introduce some alternative methods that I have found useful over my years of playing tabletop games. First, let's talk about the difficulty with difficulty class. In traditional D&D, &D, or Tales of the Valley under Pathfinder, a difficulty class, or DC, must be set by somebody, whether it's the game master or the author of a published adventure. Players roll die and add bonus numbers in an attempt to match or exceed that number, whatever that number is. There's usually a table in a game mastery guide explaining reasonable settings. It's usually something like 5 for something easy, 10 for something requiring effort, and 15 for something requiring a specialized skill, and then 20 for something that's just highly improbable. But this leaves a lot open to subjectivity when you try to map actual tasks to that kind of chart. Is swimming easy? What about swimming with all your gear on? Swimming with boots on? What about riding a horse? What about walking a tightrope? What about walking a tightrope as people on the ground are shooting arrows at you? On the one hand, there's the argument that the people of your fantasy world would find some of those things commonplace, so maybe some of these things are just a DC-5. On the other hand, a lot of these tasks in a game are performed under duress, so maybe DC-10 makes more sense. Or maybe it should be DC-15 because the alternative, in many cases, is death or near death, so you have to assume a player character is giving it their all. But then if they're giving it their all, maybe the DC should only be 10 because they're exerting themselves more and focusing, and so it's more likely to succeed than it is to fail. A as a game master, I don't know what a reasonable DC is for most actions. Given enough variables, I can usually find justification for anything to be DC 20. That doesn't make for a very fun game, though, so for the sake of moving the story forward, I can just as easily justify DC 5 for basically anything. None of the other players at the table have to make that kind of decision. Sure, every player has to make difficult choices, but it only directly affects their own character. Admittedly, a cleric choosing not to spend an action to heal someone can have an effect on another player's character, but it was the group's collective decisions that got the player characters into a situation where they would need healing in the first place. In other words, if you're an adventurer, you know there's risk. But the Game Master has a lot of choices to make about the world, but only the Game Master is in a position of receiving input from other players and making a completely subjective decision on its merits. Only the Game Master is asked to produce an arbitrary constraint governing whether another player gets to do something that they've declared they want to do. This kind of modeling is, I think, partly why the modern game master is sometimes understood erroneously, I might add, to be a different kind of player than everyone else at the table. In extreme, but not uncommon in my experience cases, the game master is seen as the master of ceremonies, the host, and main performer. When I show up to play a game each week, that's not what I'm after. I just want to play the game like everyone else, it just so happens that I'm running monsters and NPCs. The game doesn't belong to the Game Master, and the players aren't just visiting. Don't get me wrong, that may work for some Game Masters and gaming groups. It's just not the kind of game I'm interested in. As a Game Master, I'm just another player. The only difference is that I manage monster stat sheets instead of character stat sheets, and I manage the world's backstory instead of a character's backstory. I don't invent numbers governing what it takes to hit something with a sword. Those numbers are mathematically derived, and they're written down on the the stat sheets, and so should the numbers for succeeding at a skill-based 
task. There are a few systems out there that have managed to transcend the requirements of setting a target number or difficulty class. They work like this. A player spends build points during character creation to grant a character ranks in a skill. This is the threshold number. To succeed at a task, the player must roll under the skill's threshold. For example, suppose you build a rogue in an imaginary RPG system. You envision your rogue as a thief, so you invest 10 points in the lockpick skill and just 5 points in acrobatics. During the game, your thief must walk across a makeshift tightrope into a tower chamber. Your game master tells you to roll to walk the tightrope, and you roll a 7. You needed five or less to succeed because you have five skill points in acrobatics, so that's a failure. The Game Master says the tight rope snaps. You manage to grab onto the rope, though, and climb into the chamber, but the noise has alerted the guards. They're on their way. In the chamber, you find a locked treasure chest. This is what you're here for. You have ten points in lockpick, so you need to roll ten or less. You roll to pick the lock, and you roll a 7 again. That's a success because it's under 10. You pick the lock and climb the rope down the side of the tower before the guards even get into the room. That's an exciting scenario with no arbitrary target numbers from the Game Master. The only time the Game Master intervened was to rescue the player character, and frankly, the Game Master didn't have to do that. A different Game Master might have required a dice roll to determine whether the rogue was agile enough to grab onto the tight rope before falling to their death. It's an elegant way of deciding success, and it's a matter between just the player's choices and their dice. For some great examples of this system, take a look at Blue Planet, Imperium Maledictum, and to a lesser degree, Call of Cthulhu. I say to a lesser degree because in Call of Cthulhu there is some Game Master interaction on deciding which percentage the player has to roll, but the concept is pretty close. Here are my house rules for using a threshold number in Pathfinder, Tales of the Valiant, or 5th edition. For Tales of the Valiant or 5th edition, take the proficiency bonus and double it, and then add in the modifier. Treat that as the threshold number. In Pathfinder, just treat the total bonus as the threshold. So, for example, a first level character in Tales of the Valiant might have a plus two from an attribute, like dexterity or intelligence, and a plus two from their proficiency bonus on the character sheet. Double the proficiency, so that's four. Add in the attribute modifier, so that's two, so that's a six. That's a 30% chance of success. With no DC in any Wizards of the Coast adventure I've ever seen exceeding 25, characters end up with at least a 50% chance of success by level 10. That's assuming they've got some magic items that provide boosts, which by then most players do. With the help action and guidance or bless spells, the chances are actually a lot higher. By 10th level, using a threshold number, a Tales of the Valiant character with a 10 bonus has a threshold of 15, which is 65% chance of success. A bonus of a plus 12 is a 17 threshold. That's 85% chance of success. Yes, the percentages get stupidly high. If it's too high for your style of game, then don't double the proficiency bonus when calculating thresholds. You get similar numbers in Pathfinder, but as I said, you don't double anything. You just add up all of the bonuses. This is a little bit harsh on lower level characters. I mean, you might have a plus two from your attribute, like strength, and a plus two by being trained in some skill, like uh, athletics. Combined, that's 4, which is a 5, 10, 15, 20% chance of success. That's a little bit less than the 30% of a Tales of the Valiant or 5th edition character. Then again, it makes sense to be a low-level character and not to be as good at something as you become later in the game. So I go with that, but I would understand if, if a game master thought it might be nicer to adjust it for the lower levels. Whether you use threshold or target numbers, the fact of tabletop RPG is that success is the actual default setting. For an RPG to continue, the player characters have to ultimately succeed, or they tend to die or stagnate, or they fail and the world adjusts around them and creates a new game plot. Either way, skill tests aren't actually deciding the outcome of the story, they're only deciding the way the story gets told. Given that horrible truth, you might wonder why not just use target numbers instead of thresholds? Well, it's all about justification. When a published adventure specifies a DC or target number, there's kind of no 
questioning it. I mean, there is, but whether you're making one up as a game master or you're justifying a change you've made to the text of the adventure, there are mental cycles that need to happen. You're spending energy having an internal debate over what a sensible target is for a specific situation under specific circumstances. And then when a player succeeds, you might wonder if it was too low. And when a character fails, you wonder whether you set it too high. And that doesn't even consider the times when a player calls your decision out and, and questions why you've set it so high or why you've set it too low. A threshold number removes this mental processing and makes it a static measure of chance as defined by the players during character creation. And that's what an RPG ought to be about the player characters. Try using a threshold number instead of arbitrary DCs. See if it works better for you. It certainly has been working better for me, and I think it's just flat out better game design. Thanks for watching.